day. Are you Mr. Ramsey's? I'm Dorothy Fremont. Uh, well, I heard about you from a friend of mine, Annette Dupree. I'm giving a dinner party in two weeks for my daughter, and Mrs. Dupree said that you cater to just the type of thing I'm looking for. I want uh, uh, something unusual, something totally different. Yes, Mrs. Fremont. I do cater to unusual affairs. What do you consider to be unusual? Oh, I don't know. What do you recommend? Have you ever had an Egyptian feast? Why, that would be fine. That would be perfect. My daughter, Suzette, is a student of Egyptian culture. Mr. Ramsey, she'd just love it. Hi, this is Brandon Ford. And this is Tony the Tiger, the thunder from Down Under. And welcome to the Blind Rage Podcast. This is the week of Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble. So, yes, gobble, gobble. <laughs> so we are doing a little, um, we're having a feast mm -hmm. of our own. But this week it's a blood feast. That's right. We are doing the first gore movie ever made, 1963's Blood Feast, mm -hmm. directed by and co-written by Herschel Gordon Lewis. Um, and Tony, I don't think you've seen this before, have you? No, I only figured out that I'd seen snippets in Serial Mum. You only just figured that out, <laughs> even though I've told you at least 20 well, times. Well, it they only show really sinks in once I see it for myself. <laughs> I, I really don't believe you, Brendan. <laughs> I'm so glad that you listen when I talk. Yeah, that makes me happy. Next, so next time I'm going to be recommending things usual? that you tell me. <laughs> I'll be one of those people. Oh, I'm pretty sure you've already done oh, that. I'm sure. But we're going to get into the usuals. But before we do that... I want to get the plugs quickly out of the way. I'd like to encourage everyone to check out my books in hardcover, Kindle and Paperback Editions on Amazon.com by typing in Brandon Ford. You'll find my author page there as well, which you can follow in order to receive email notifications whenever I have a new release. I also have several titles available in audiobook format, which you can easily find on Audible by typing in Brandon Ford if you don't already. Um, please follow me on Instagram at writer Brandon Ford on both Letterboxd and Twitter at Brandon Ford. You can also follow Tony on Letterboxd at Tony underscore the underscore bear. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, critiques, suggestions, recommendations, feel free to email me directly at blindragepod81 at gmail.com. Please don't forget to drop by the Blind Rage Podcast official Facebook page to like and subscribe. Last and most importantly, please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the Blind Rage Podcast on your preferred podcasting platform. I got that down to a science now. It only took like 150 some odd episodes. Mm. Um, You've done well, darling. So... Um, so what have you been watching recently? Well, uh, the only movie of note that I watched was uh, Keanu Reeves in Constantine, which is that um, it's based on a DC comics uh, about a sort of a exorcist superhero type of guy who deals with demons. I uh -huh. enjoyed... Uh -huh. Parts of it, but as a whole, I, I kind of found it a bit of a boring experience. <laughs> mm. It's always fun to see Tilda Swinston and things, but you, you go now. <laughs> I have a bad association with that movie because I just, I just, whenever I think about that movie, I remember having 
a bad argument with my ex and him walking me to the bus stop um, because we were arguing at his house. Mm -hmm. And I, on the shelter, inside the shelter, there was a big poster for that movie because it had about, about to come out. Yeah. So that so that's all you that's got. stuck in your memory. <laughs> oh, and uh, and stemming probably maybe stemming from Tilda Swinton. Uh, I watched um, the original Doctor Strange because um, I was gonna go watch the um, sequel, but I never got around to it. So I just watched the original. Is that a James Bond movie? No, it's it's another Marvel movie. So another comic book movie about Marvel, oh. and uh, it deals with a superhero who kind of. Uh, uh, works in the realm of chakras and stuff like that <laughs> why are you watching superhero movies what is going I on i must have been in a mood <laughs> well oh, i didn't realize that constantine was a superhero movie until the end and it was like oh okay until the end by the by the time the credits rolled yeah when it said oh that's when you realize what you were watching yeah that it said oh uh, like uh based on the dc comic whatever <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't make note of these things, <laughs> and and in saying oh, that, I don't mind uh, movies that are based on graphic. One of my favourite movies is um, V for Vendetta, so <laughs> and that's based on a graphic novel. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what have you watched of late? Well, most recently. Or not most recently, but quite recently, I watched a movie that I quite enjoyed very much, and it was recommended to me by someone very special, and that movie was called The House of Yes. Oh, who, who told you about that movie? <laughs> My favorite Australian <laughs> koala. Isn't that ironic? And that's another Thanksgiving movie. Yeah. Yes, but they don't. They don't eat. Well, they could have had the uh, cranberry juice, the the jelly. It's pretty cooked. They could have. They could have. They could have. I don't like that. <laughs> cranberry jelly. Those cranberries. <laughs> no, it looks like organs. Um, but yes, I thought that was quite enjoyable. I thought Parker Posey stole the show. I thought she was wonderful, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed all the woody dialogue and the. F funny quips that had the me fast pace laughing out loud it was very fast paced it did not there were no lulls whatsoever not even tori I spelling not was a lull bored. i thought it was one of her better roles i thought she did well mm. yes uh i yeah i i liked everybody i thought everybody did, did very well even freddie prince jr who really didn't have a lot to do no um but i thought he did well um, actually, when um, I called you, I was considering introducing myself by saying pancakes. Pancakes, <laughs> Anthony. You're so bourgeois. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, but that was, that was very, very enjoyable. Do you know, by the way, was anybody in the movie in the play? I beg your pardon? In the play, was there anybody from the movie who was in the oh, play? I wouldn't. I don't think so. Um, really, yeah. I, I, uh, unless Marty, like that would probably be the only one I, I could imagine. Um, yeah, I know that the director went on to do Mean Girls. That is was um. Oh yeah, it was written by uh, Tina Fey. Um, yeah, yeah. I know his last name is Waters. Yes. Marcus Waters, I think. Uh, Mark yes. Waters. Yes, yes, yes. And and Parker Posey went on to do absolutely nothing. No. No, she went on to do Scream 3. Oh. The poor thing. People, although people say she was the best thing in Scream 3. <laughs> Aside from Courtney's bangs. <laughs> 
I think that was a wig. I really do. Well, I thought so too, but it doesn't just distract that from But the everybody fact. says, but whenever anybody talks about that movie, whether they love it or hate it, all they say is, oh my God, what the hell is with Courtney Cox's hair? And I am 99% positive it's a wig. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that when she was on Friends at that time, she had short hair. Yeah. Um, it was almost a lesbian talking friend, about that nonsense. Okay. Oh, it was horrendous that wig. Um, um, yes. So, in addition to the House of Yes, which I quite enjoyed, I also uh, watched um, the uh, Evan Rachel Wood uh, documentary, the two-part documentary, Phoenix Rising. Ah, uh, yeah. Have you seen no, it? No, uh, I have heard about it in regards to her experience with Marilyn. Yes. That it dizzled um, down. I do. I, whenever these things come out, I always remember reading the tabloids at the time and what they were saying and how vicious they were. And sort of putting that idea in my head that she must be like a real weirdo. <laughs> So it's good that when they well, can come I do out remember set the record straight. I do remember that there was a biography on him when they were together. That was for the Biography Channel, and they interviewed her, and she was kind of you know singing his praises about being an artist and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but at that time, she was you know uh, brainwashed. Yeah, yeah, she was uh, pretty much used. She was a victim. Very much. I mean, uh, I I don't know if I can say that I enjoyed the documentary, but I thought it was very well done. Yeah. I thought it was very brave. She came across as uh, very well spoken and intelligent, and she told her story with grace and courage and i thought it was very inspirational for women who have been under the same kind of uh abuse um some of it was very hard to hear yeah um because it was it was quite dark even you know by marilyn manson uh, you know standard standards yeah. but it was <sighs> It was, yeah, it was, it was bad. And, um, anybody who disbelieves her, uh, I think is in such, is steeped in such denial because of their Manson fandom, because some of the things that she said, you, you, you can't make up. Mm -hmm. Um, and, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Dark Lord, as he portrayed himself for so many years, you know, Satan's disciple, and <laughs> I thought it was very funny that um, it, uh, right before the documentary uh, aired, he sued uh, Evan Rachel Wood for emotional distress. <laughs> it was very frightening. Yeah, that made me laugh out loud. Yeah. Emotional distress. Fuck yourself. Uh, people make me sick. <laughs> but uh, have you seen 13, by the way? The bat Yes, I have. A long time ago. Mm -hmm. With Catherine yeah, I didn't. I didn't really... No. It was Evan Rachel Wood's movie. No, the director was Catherine Hardwick. Who's that? Uh, she went on to do uh, Twilight. But it's about the 13-year-olds oh and it was kind of like kids, but not. <laughs> well, it was her story. Yeah. Oh, okay. You didn't know no, that? No, I Well, she helped co-write the script. Okay. Um, but what, what happened was, in reality, she... She was the main girl. Yep. Who at the end got, you know, backstabbed and accused of, of everything. And 
Um, but when they did the movie, she wanted to be on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So she she played the role of the other girl, yeah. which I thought was was very smart and interesting. Um, well, yeah, because uh, uh, you can then sort of um, get rid of your victimhood. Oh, well, like you can unattach yourself to that role and uh, play the other role how you saw it <laughs> from that perspective. It's it's quite fascinating. You're saying that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest issue I had with it was Holly Hunter has a nude scene, like, for no reason. <laughs> so it's just coming off of Crash. It's, <laughs> it's like, okay, here's my boobs. Uh -huh. Oh, did she have a nude scene in Crash? Uh, she might have. Uh, the only scenes that I can remember of her is uh, her being dog eating in the back of a car, but <laughs> she was in That's clothes. Exactly. So. Yeah. Oh, God. Was it by James Spader? I believe so. Well, she was writing him. Oh, that's... So you hardly saw oh. him. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> it's a very cold movie. It's very unemotional, so it's not done sexually. There's nothing There's there's nothing no. sexual about James Spader. Nothing, nothing at all. Okay. Um, but speaking of sexual, mm -hmm. I think we should get into Blood Feast. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking with a boss in accent going... sooner than later. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna do that. I thought that the mother had a real strong Boston accent. Maybe I was missing, oh, like a real like, <laughs> no, well, not Boston, but like uh, Martha's Vineyard, <laughs> East East Coast, New York. Well, let me tell, let me say something because I revisited, I revisited it again today, and um, have you seen um, Two Hundred Cigarettes? Oh, I. Probably have, but in saying that I can like, because I always remember getting the video, putting it on, and then I just can't remember anything after that. <laughs> Is that about mm. a New Year's Eve party well, uh, with Christina Ricci? And yes, with Chris, Christina Ricci. Well, Chris, Christina Ricci and Abby Hoffman's characters are from a small town in, I think, upstate New York called Ronkonkoma. So they have this really weird east coast accent and um they they're arguing because they can't find it and abby says something about your cousin's not having a party or anything is she and um christina goes she is having a party i just need the address <laughs> and every time the mother says party she kept making uh, me think yeah, of yeah, that yeah. movie because everything, she, whenever she spoke, she kind of spoke, you know, kind of without an accent. But when she said party, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Came across. I, was, as, I don't know if I was oh, getting I like the neighbor from Bewitched vibes. Mm. Anyway, well, we'll talk about that <laughs> when we get to that. We'll talk scene. about that when we get. <laughs> we'll get to it when we get. We'll to burn it. that bridge when we get to it. Okay, we will. All right, so. If you want to watch along, I'm sure you can find Blood Feast on YouTube. It's not that obscure. Okay, so here we go. Are we mm -hmm. ready? Okay, we're going to begin in three, two, one, play. Manson International. So, Herschel directed co-wrote did this awful music Score, yeah <laughs> produced and this was a uh, did the costuming 24, as well 24,000 <laughs> 24, budget in 1963 i'm sure that wasn't yeah. cheap pittance um and that's Herschel right there okay. on the radio well i feel like a house might have cost like sixty thousand. Badly mutilated. Because of these murders, police request that all women stay inside uh, their homes after dark. Um, I well, mm, remember when I asked you to make the um the image yes for the podcast, and I sent you. Still shots. And then people um, complained about the image. 
People complained about how, yeah. It's been done since Well, <laughs> that was from a movie called Blood Cult. Yes. And it has an opening scene very much like this one, where it's a girl being dismembered in a tub. Oh, okay. So I think I think Blood Cult ripped this off. See, I also, um, it's it's obviously not that, but it reminds me of the murder scene at the beginning of Mute Witness, if you ever remember that movie. I heard, I remember it. I didn't see it, except not in the bathtub. It was it was just when you know there was something, someone on the radio saying there's a there's a murderer out. <laughs> mm. It's got a bit of baby powder Isn't in his eyebrows. Bargain. Do you know? Well, this was a this they shot this in four days. Okay. First of all. Um. And he's supposed to be like, I don't know, 60. He was 29. Really? Okay. Well, I think I actually was thinking he was supposed to be like a timeless figure where he looked old, but also young at the same time. And in, in that, that way, I thought they were effective. He uh, was a bodybuilder. Oh, really? And he was a body dismember. And he first met Herschel on a nudie cutie movie called Goldilocks and the Three Bears oh. that had a scene that took place in a nudist camp. Yeah. And they went, they wanted, <laughs> I think this is funny, but um, oh, I got to get to the Sphinx. <laughs> That's concrete. That concrete sphinx is only six feet tall. Okay. And that was really outside the the hotel where where they filmed the Suez Motel. And I think it's still there. Okay. Um, but the Sphinx was what inspired the script because they was like, oh, this Sphinx, maybe we could do something Egyptian. Although um I'm I'm surprised that uh they recreated it with the nose broken off. Mm-hmm. Um, filmed in Florida. So yeah, Mal Mal Arnold, who played um, Fuad Ramses, was in this in this uh, news camp movie, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, and they wanted people with good physiques to be background in this nudist camp. Yeah. And if you've ever seen footage of a nudist camp, yeah, that's not really the case. <laughs> No, they're full of people you would never in a million years want to see naked. Yeah. Certainly not bodybuilders. Um, but I do remember seeing a shot. Well, he didn't want to get naked. Yeah. Uh, he showed up on set with a bathing suit on and they were like, no, no, that's got to go. <laughs> and in the Herschel Gordon Lewis documentary, The Godfather of Gore, they show footage of him he's got a nice little laugh oh did you see his penis no it's just his ass yeah. oh, then, at least from what yeah. i remember from what i remember you on could the have worn one of his bodybuilder g-strings no in a nudist camp you have everybody has to be naked no but i'm saying Herschel if you, you could too. see his front then <laughs> But no, they couldn't have filmed it there then. Oh, so it was that an because they don't allow colony. people oh, in uh, colony. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they don't allow anybody with clothing with clothes yep. on. So Herschel had to be naked, and as a Dave Friedman, who was the producer and produced a bunch of Herschel's yeah. movies. That's um. So, I know with uh, naked parties, you can still wear underwear if you want. Um, yes. I, um, in one of David Sedaris's books, he wrote about his experience going to a nudist colony. I think it was just something to do so he could write about it. Yeah, yeah. But what I guess people who are going to nudist colonies don't realize is that it's probably best to wait a little bit um, to go outside um, if you've just used the restroom 
because there tends to be a ring mm -hmm. from the toilet seat around your ass. Oh, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Lord. So you're just announcing to everybody that you just dropped a deuce. But the something that I have a phobia about is whenever, whenever I get a massage and have to lie on the massage table, that it kind of looks like I've just been through the birth canal. Where I've got that ring around my face look. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> everybody has that. This woman is the worst actress ever. <laughs> um, and Mal Arnold seems to think that he did exceptionally well in yes. this. See. I don't mind this woman, but I feel like her going to the shop is the most uncharacteristic thing. <laughs> yes, it's all very forced. No, it's, because like, because we have our bourgeois, like uh, um, Anglo-Saxons living here, and they wouldn't go to like Gaganas to organize a dinner party. They'd go to like a rural upmarket place. Well, this was a Syrian deli yeah, so I, that they used. I couldn't imagine her going there. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, no, I'm just saying what they used. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in in reality, but um, I, I I I'm still unclear as to what it is that the party is supposed to be because a normal person would say we're having an engagement dinner. Yeah. She just keeps saying we're having a party. Oh, or a party. <laughs> um, for my daughter. And the daughter, played by Connie Mason, um, was a problem. How so? She, Her tan? <laughs> she, well, she was, she, well, she could not act at yeah, all. Yeah, there were scenes where I thought she was um, reading, like she kept turning her head and I thought, oh, is she reading a card? Probably was. She couldn't remember any lines. Um, she was always late. <sighs> and she and Herschel butted heads more than a few times. Uh, and but she was also in 2000 Maniac, so I guess they got over it. She wasn't too bad, maybe they butted um, pelvises as well. Maybe they did, but both she and the woman who gets her tongue ripped out were found at they were Playboy okay. bunnies. Um, so that's that's basically why they were hired because of the way they look, they weren't actresses, yeah, yeah, yeah. but. Um, well, um, the woman who gets her tongue ripped out was hired Swedish woman. I can't remember her name, Astrid something. Um, but she was, she was hired specifically because she had a huge mouth. Okay. And they needed somebody with a big mouth to put that sheep's tongue in. <laughs> They could have hired my sister. And <laughs> She's just oh, a loud oh mouth. <laughs> um, one thing I want to talk about, I know we're, we're, I'm jumping all over the place here, but with that, that scene with the tongue being ripped out is probably the most famous scene in the movie because mm -hmm. it's the one everybody remembers. Um, and look at that, there was a sheep song and there's this, the story behind it, I think, is pretty well known. But for the uninitiated, they kept it in a refrigerator at the Suez Motel where, where they were filming. Mm -hmm. And power went out <laughs> and it started to go bad. And it smelled god-awful. So one of the crew members cleaned it thoroughly with pine salt oh. to get rid of the um, smell. Yeah. And they did not tell oh. anyone what they did, including the girl whose mouth they put yeah. it in. So what it, nobody seems to have a problem with is that they put something that was soaked in pine yeah. salt in this poor woman's mouth. I mean, why? For God knows yeah, how long. Why buy the tongue so far in advance? Well, you can't buy it the day of. No. Well, I don't even think it was that far. In, well, it was like it was a four day shoot, oh, so it couldn't have yeah, been that far in advance. So, um, and I think they had to go 
I think they had to go to the next town to get some of the some of the meat looking yeah. stuff. I love these zoom ins. You don't see enough of them anymore. Mm hmm. <laughs> He didn't know how to act either, this actor. So Herschel told him, well, here's what you do. I just want you to shout all your yeah. lines. And he was like, okay, got it. So that's where his performance came yes. from. <laughs> or, you know, and I'm doing performance with air quotes. <laughs> One of the cops couldn't say the word identify okay in one scene he kept saying identify <laughs> and they had three takes which was the max yep, yep. herschel gave him three times and the third time each time ident identify 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 herschel herschel said cut it to the movie yep. um because we're not going to be here all day wasting huh? Whatever this was, probably 16. So, being that you have never seen the movie in full, what was your impression? I enjoyed the movie. Uh, you know, it's... Because um, I used to watch a lot of, uh, um, like, The Hammer, the um, Vincent Price, you know, Tales from the Crypt, um, Terror in the Crypt style horrors that came from Italy. Universal. No, no, the more the Italian ones. I know, oh, the Italian. Well, Vincent Price didn't do Italian ones. No, well, he? I reckon, because there was one that I used to watch every now and then that would come on called uh, Terror from the Crypt. And I looked that up and it has another name like, um, let's say The Vampire's Kiss or something like that. But it was, uh, and Vincent Price, Price was in it, I'm quite sure. But anyway, that was the type of horrors that I sort of, the older style horrors that I would watch. Whereas compared to that, this one was relatively more polished and even the colouring was... Um, oh my God, I almost did a spit take. When I said polished? <laughs> well, yes! Well, I, I actually did this, yeah. <laughs> oh. I've seen worse, is no, what I'm trying no, to say. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, how fitting. Did you hear his name? Yes. Yes, you did. Now, I must confess, because I didn't <laughs> have a lot of time to watch the movie. Um, so I had to squeeze it in. And I did so by playing it at uh, 1.3 times the speed. Oh, good. So the next, go <laughs> the next scene, when Tony is screaming, was quite hilarious. <laughs> Well, that is some pretty bad <laughs> overacting, yes. I mean, uh, men in these kinds of movies or male characters are generally not this hysterical. Yes. So I don't know if he was trying to prove something or he was taking the role a little too seriously. I don't know what else he went on to do. Maybe um, Herschel, want, like, he gave a more subdued performance and then Herschel said, give me more, but, like... <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Because Herschel didn't really know how to direct yeah. either. Herschel was an English teacher. Okay. Where um, was he from? And then he got into advertising. Uh, I think... I think... He's from Chicago. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> But he did a lot of filming in uh, in Florida. <laughs> I made her stay. <laughs> Get a grip. Take it easy, Tony. Get a hold of yourself. Was this the the one who said? Prove that you love me. Oh, yeah, I think so. <gasps> yeah, yeah. I think you should have said that before. I would have paid more attention. Because I can't remember if it was when the guy drives 
the gill. No, it, I don't think it's that okay. part. It, or is there two scenes where there's a couple on the beach? Uh, I don't know if it was that scene where, yeah, the, the cop guy <laughs> drove the girl home. Or drove the girl somewhere. No. Well, is this the, was this the one where he took her brain? Yes. Okay. And she got her hair done. <laughs> okay. For this <laughs> scene. <laughs> She got her hair did, just so she can get Becky her. Becky with the good brain. That's true. Well, we've got to notify the parents. I don't look forward to that. You check on the boys. Listen to those waves. <laughs> well, it's easier to listen to that than to his to live in delivery. <laughs> Officer, go get a stretch please. Oh, that's nice to see as a crow supporter looking at his tie. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I just... It always seems so fun. <laughs> Sorry. It seemed like it would be a lot of fun to me. I know. he's He hasn't gotten the grip. No, it's yet. the mother. <laughs> but... Oh, yeah. Well, we get a... We get a... <laughs> a sequel. A, a double dose. And she's yeah. wearing a turban. Um, <laughs> Well, maybe they should have put her in a walker. <laughs> Get a walker and put me because in a... Because she, she looks like Gloria fucking Swanson. Is she 70, David? Is she 70? Uh, oh, lace gloves. Oh, my lord. Yeah, that was back in the day when when they get dressed up to go to lady like to learn about your daughter's yes, dance. You got <laughs> with a turban. When you got your turban and your lace gloves, and you went to the police to identify your brainless, <laughs> literally <Yes>. brainless <laughs> daughter. What well, I don't, uh, what really doesn't come into into play really are, are two things and the first one is that there's only two victims i think that they say are in this book club mm -hmm. what that has to do with anything i don't know and that fuad ramses wrote this book about um the egyptian um uh what do you call it so yeah, cult feasts and, and and yeah the cults and and it's called Weird yeah. Egyptian Cult or something, which I, don't know, I thought was a little yeah. weird uh, <laughs> itself. But why? And plus, why would he bring it to a, a murder? And why would he leave it at a murder? Well, the first one, the girl had it. She had yeah. it. I thought. No, because she puts it well, down I thought next it was, to a bathtub, I reckon. And then. She was going to read it in yeah, the top? So. <laughs> well, they talk about it like it was, you know. A surprise. Left by the killer. Oh, uh, okay. Need it for your rebirth. Oh, yes. Well, when he was in the documentary that they had done about Herschel he was interviewed and he would he was in his 70s yeah um he didn't look bad for a guy in his 70s yeah yeah i don't know what he looks like now because that was like 10 years ago yeah. 10 11 years ago it's pretty ashy maybe maybe he looks like this <laughs> Do you know what this song is? It's a really slowed down version of something. How dry I am. Uh, is that what your date said? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so when Harvey was picking up the chicks. It's a stupid song that drunk people sing. Ah, okay, yes. It does sound very, uh, like... Irish singing, uh, 
drunk artist. Well, it's not a it's not a shanty, <laughs> but it's it's like um, it's like like um, remember on Friday the Thirteenth Part Six, the drunk um, uh, cemetery uh, grave digger. <gasps> oh yes, take me home again, Kathleen. It's one of those songs you sing to yourself while you're drinking. Yeah, yeah. But he, Herschel wanted this because this guy's a drunk. Yes. Oh. I've been doing a bit of day for not filming. Got very <laughs> deep there. Now, Herschel said that he played all of the instruments. Well, I feel that he played this at a normal rate and then slowed it down. Just because it sounded quite normal uh, when I watched it the first time. <laughs> no, it's no, because it, it you probably heard it at the at the rate it's supposed yeah. to sound. Um, no, I don't think he knew how to slow shit. Down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he barely knew how to play any of the instruments. He actually like got a book that uh, that said how to like score a movie. Yeah, yeah. Like he got a how to do stuff. I think. Yes, I uh, scored movie, my uh, first movie. Me. <laughs> the, the, the score I it was did all was all Kylie Minogue tracks, wasn't it? No, no, no. It was quite inappropriate. Like, uh, like it didn't make sense to the movie. It was I played a there's a uh, it's a four stringed Croatian um, um, like a gypsy guitar, and I played that just with a bit of a beat, just tapping it, and then played it backwards uh, through the computer. <laughs> so it sounded good, but it didn't make sense to, for it was. It was a comedy, and it sounded quite um, morbid. So. See, his fingers in her um, mouth is quite creepy. Well, they told her the one. The only thing they did tell her beforehand was that he's going to be a little rough with you. Yeah, and she was like, "Oh, good, I love a rough man." <laughs> She was down. Yes. But from what I recall, I don't really think her mouth was abnormally no, no, not, yeah. sized. But in the I was listening to the commentary as well as the do, as watching the documentary for this and they both were both both Herschel and Dave Friedman were saying how cavernous her mouth was. <laughs> she doesn't look that big. It looks just she looks. I mean, unless she normal. had a deep mouth where she they could put more stuff into. Maybe she did. Maybe that's what she was teabagging. Maybe she was known for something else, mm -hmm. and that's why she was hired. On the way to your party. Oh God. Um, she reminds me of my acting <laughs> in that like um when i've read stuff you were terrible yeah, I, am, uh, I feel like i can hear myself sort of taking the breath before delivering words where i need to like yes brandon you know, like, you know who used to do that all the time and he used to drive me crazy <laughs> jim parsons from like every sentence, he would take a. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah, but I think on the was, Big Bang Theory, that was, uh, something that his character did, as opposed to what what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen him in anything else. Well, he was in that. Oh God, uh, the boys in the band. I reckon. The boys in the yeah. band. I didn't see that. I saw the original one from the seventies. Yeah. Not that I'm a big Parsons fan. I uh, grew to not despise him I <laughs> oh there was a time when you despised him no it, it never got that harsh but I just caught it kind of um uh wasn't so much a you know I'd watch the Big Bang the first few times I'm like ugh but then like suddenly I started well, enjoying I'm, it <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a question <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question, and I've asked this to, I've asked 
several gay men this and they've all given the same answer and i'll see if you do mm -hmm. too somebody had a gun to your head and said you have to sleep with one of the four main male cast members of the big bang theory who would you choose oh uh good for polly what because he, he looks he's he's a british actor and he looks quite different from his persona that he plays in the in the show oh my god nobody has ever said that <laughs> Everybody always says Raj. Yeah, Raj Kuthrapali. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about Wallowitz. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not English. Yes, he is. He's not. He's not. He's English. Been no, he's not. I heard him in. I seen him interview too, and he's got the same accent. No. I'll send you a link to him being interviewed. Because oh, I, okay. I thought show. no. I I. Hmm? That's why I was so shocked because I thought you were, I thought you meant Howard. Oh, oh. no, nah, Howard no, doesn't really I, do it for me. Raj is very cute. I did kind of hope that his he would sort of come out towards the end of like that he would um, realize his homosexuality, but that never happened. <laughs> well, I I don't know what the hell the whole thing with making him as gay as possible when he wasn't actually gay was supposed to mm. be. Because I had a friend who, who, was, who was probably my best friend um, around high school and then a few years afterwards. And he used to, re he reminded me a lot of like the um, Wallowitz Kutrapoli, um, like a uh, girl hungry star person. And then we lost contact, and then it turned out he is now with a man. Like, <laughs> so. the scene when he breaks down and starts crying to Penny because he can't find anybody I was like, oh. <laughs> that was sad. It was. It was so sad. And I was like, listen to that sad, sad music. <laughs> um, it's like boohoo. <laughs> you always forget the... Uh, it's like boohoo. Uh, ominous cello and organ music. Mm, it's all very ominous. Yeah, flickering it's very eyes, unsettling yes. and unnerving. Yes, I'm, I'm so scared right mm. now. This came with vomit bags. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, in case yeah, but at the time, people wouldn't have seen this type of stuff. Apparently, it was one of the first video nasties in the UK. Well, um, and that's how it they was call a video it nasty in the UK. <laughs> nasty. Well, it was a video nasty, but or yes, it was a nasty, <laughs> but um, that was eighty four. So this had already long been out. Yeah. Um, but this was one of the ones that was banned, yeah. And it was finally released in 01, but it was cut by, I think, four minutes. And then it, they released it again in 05, finally uncut. Yeah. So it was almost 40 years. Um, and interestingly, this was a movie that was... First of all, it was... It was made because Herschel and Dave Freeman wanted to make a movie that would have some kind of audience appeal, but hadn't been done before. A movie that Hollywood hadn't done or wouldn't do. Yeah. Um, so they came up with the idea of making a gore film because there weren't any censorship laws for gore because nobody had made a gore movie before um but um so this was essentially made for drive-ins okay but it did have some showings in in theaters in los angeles it had a, a bit of a a following but 
it was it was censored. All the gore scenes were cut. Okay. Which is unusual for it to be cut to be shown in an indoor theater when in a drive in all of the crazy shit is out in the open. Yeah. Isn't there any clue at all, Tony? <laughs> she needs to get a clue. Did she... Oh, aside from 2000 Maniacs, did she do much else? I don't aside know. from anal? I don't know. She probably did a little bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> Grey hair and strange glowing eyes. In the remake, they have um, Robert Rustler oh, okay. in the Fuad Ramsey's role. And, um, 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 not, not, not the same. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because, well, I mean, they really uglied him up here. Yeah. And Robert Russell is very cute. What's he from? A Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Jesse's friend. Yep, yep, yep. And he was also in Weird Science. Oh, uh, as the brother. No, he was... That's, that's fucking... Bill Paxton. Um, <laughs> Bill Paxton. No, he was... Um, he was Robert Downey Jr.'s friend. Okay. Oh my god. Pete, don't make a joke of it. You know I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> don't make a joke of it. And it is such a lovely night. Why not? Yeah, it, like I feel she sort of even has a bit of a north and nor'easter accent. I don't know if uh well I mean unless Florida oh. hadn't found its footing by way of accents yet. <laughs> Which I know is a weird um, point to say, but... I... I don't... I don't think they... Well... Uh, with the exception of, of... of Connie Mason and... and um, the... Uh, the Swedish girl who were found at, at one of the Playboy parties, so they were cast out of California. Um, but... Oh, and by the way, Connie Mason, when Dave Dave Friedman met her, and he was like, um, "Do you do you want to be in the movie?" And she was like, "I know who you are. You and Herschel Gordon Lewis make all those nudie <laughs> movies. I don't want to be in your movie." And he's like, "No, we're not making uh, any. You don't have to do any nudity. It's just." But by the way, she was about to be in Playboy. <laughs> okay, so. Um, irony. Yes. So yeah, he was like, "All you gotta do is work for two days, and you get one hundred seventy-five dollars." And she's like, "Okay." You know, ever since I was a little boy, I've always wanted to have a jukebox that that only plays Connie Mason. Oh, who's Connie Mason? <laughs> I thought that's the girl that you were saying, Connie Mason. <sighs> I was going along with what you were doing. <laughs> oh, honey, listen to this. You were supposed <laughs> to right. say, shut up, honey, listen and learn. <laughs> How about a little cocktail party? <laughs> oh, God, I'm, I'm screwing up the party. lines. Yeah, my God. <laughs> yeah, you're screwing up everything. You ruined it all. <laughs> You've been ruining all of yes. my episodes lately. It's, it's the break it's we've my, been waiting it's my for. Brain injury. <laughs> we'll blame it on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how many have you had? Uh, well, after the seventh, you and by that down. I mean cocktails. <laughs> what? Huh? Oh, I've had oh, many yes. cocktails. Let me tell you. Herschel pretty much admitted that these police procedural scenes and the scenes with 
the daughter and her friend in the pool talking about the party were padding. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were trying to make us. They were trying to make a seventy-minute movie. Yeah. Um, but they didn't. Uh, you even get that far. With that. No. Um. I was going to say something, but I've forgotten. This, oh yeah, this girl that got attacked, we didn't see her attack, did we? Uh, I don't think no, so. I was trying to think, this, this isn't the one that got her tongue no, taken out. Well, oh, the one who got her face, her face yeah. ripped off. No, I don't know, I don't think so. Yeah. I can't hear you. Oh my god. <laughs> she sounds like she should be doing phone yes. sex. <laughs> <laughs> right there and she's talking so yes. slow so that your minute like your five dollars a minute really goes forever <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he was deep inside of me wow uh. oh shit I forgot. Oh, I guess I talked over my favorite line in the movie. <laughs> it's at the first scene when you see the police in the uh, and they're talking about the first murder, and one of the detectives goes, "Yeah, this is going to be a long, hard one." Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's dead. But I love how he knew who she was and that she had limited time. <laughs> yes. Yet he made her say, what is your name? Yes. Couldn't we just, you know, cut to the chase? I mean, the poor thing's on borrowed mm, time as it is. already pulled the plug. Yeah. Well, I'm just looking at my horse racing. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen that movie Ishtar? No. Uh, There's a shop here called Beatty. Ishtar. John Waters is such a huge fan of this movie mm -hmm. and of Herschel. He's in the in the um, documentary, as is Frank Henenlotter. Okay. What does Herschel think of these movies? Do they ever really... Oh, he thinks they're terrible. Oh, really? No, he thinks... He... Well... Out of all the movies that he made, 2000 Maniacs is the one he's proudest of. And he said the one he would most like to be remembered for. Yeah. But... That's not going to happen. Because this mess is what he's going to be most remembered for. But I think people love this movie. It's I don't think it's seen as... Uh, uh, um, <laughs> terrible in a bad way. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to have to disagree. Well, coming from... In my opinion, I, I actually don't think it's so terrible. I, I'm en I enjoyed it. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it still. Now that you get to watch Ancient it. Ancient Weird Religious Rites. Correct. <laughs> That's the name of the book. <laughs> Ancient Weird Religious Rite. Okay. It's a tongue twister. Of... Yeah. Look at that organ. <laughs> Sp speaking of long, hard ones. Mm. One of those second blows. Mm hmm. God, Elton, can't you suck? <laughs> I would like to speak to Miss Trudy Sanders, please. Oh, I see. No, oh, it's quite urgent. Uh, could you tell me what? 
this accent that he's trying to put on goes in and yes. out, in and out. It gets a lot thicker toward the end of the movie. And I think this was done, this was shot in sequential yeah, yeah. order. It's very um, uh, Kamal, as opposed to Egyptian. I forget, I forget exactly what Frank, Frank and Lauder said, um, but he said something. I think he said that Mel Arnold's performance was the most over the top in the movie, and Connie Mason's was the most subdued because she really wasn't capable of any emotion yes. at all. She could compete Very with the uh, Egyptian statue. Yeah. I wonder if that's still there. I was trying to look up. No, no, it's the, the one that, it's the one that uh, uh, Ishtar's talking to all the time. Oh. The they goddess. About the Sphinx. Yes. The goddess. Yes, the goddess. I find these scenes so innocent, that, just, just by the like, compared to modern porn. Did I tell you that John is in Blood Feast 2? No. How could you not? Mm -hmm. That's that. Damn Jehovah's Witness trying to get in again. Mm hmm. <laughs> Can I ask a weird question <laughs> about uh, your swimming pools? Is it legally required for you to have a fence around them? Not that I know okay. of. That's a, that's a big thing in Australia, is that every pool has to be fenced off. Getting late. I've got to leave. I want to finish shopping before it gets too dark. Gives me the shivers when I think of that killer. Well, that's a, good, that's a good law, because a lot of children fall in and drown. Yes. So, so they need to be yeah, childproof, those gates that you sort of need to be fidgety with to open. Those automatic covers are also very dangerous. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds Doesn't awesome. Doesn't that sound exciting? That's radical, Brandon. But the way the scene, the way the scene started, I'm so excited about my party. Really? Are you sure? Because you don't sound... Too excited. <laughs> What's porn level acting yes. on? Oh. Uh oh. Spaghetti O. This is literally a drum roll. <laughs> I guess. It's like, <laughs> I'm waiting for a ta da! <laughs> yes. It, it reminds me very so much is of this... like, uh, if you ever saw the Carry On movies, when they were like set in jungles, <laughs> I just use this drum beat. No. I can only hope it's not the killer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is this your first and only Herschel Gordon Lewis movie? Yes. Well, uh, uh, it is... My only for the time being. I wouldn't mind checking out his other works. I enjoy um, um, these type of movies. I like... Um, my favorite is uh, The Wizard of Gore. Okay. Was that one of his later ones? No. Okay. Well, that was in the 70s. So kind of later, yeah. 
Most pe- most people's favorites is um, or the favorite of most people is Two Thousand Maniacs. Hello, yeah. Um, Calling Me Blood Red is, I like that one too, although it's a bit slow. Yeah, yeah. I believe they did 2000 Maniacs after this, and they went from a four day shoot to a two week shoot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That'd be burnt out by the but end of that. No, none of them, none of them were as successful as this okay so uh because i've heard of 2000 maniacs as well i was i'm surprised that um it didn't overtake this one successfully but it does sound like fun and i'll get there as soon as i can okay well there's remake of that one um with lynn shay and robert england um I don't know why, but it's called 2001 Maniacs. <laughs> um, well, I don't know why they just didn't call it 2000 Maniacs. What year was okay. it released? Uh, I think um, 05. Okay. And then there was um, the sequel. Um, 2002? 2000. No, it was 2001 Maniacs. Colin Field of Screams. <laughs> it was not it was not very good. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is she crying or orgasming? <laughs> well, I think she only knows how to moan in one way. Mm. <laughs> See, there the accent left. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Now, can you really die from being whipped with rope? I'm asking um, you as our BDSM. <laughs> yes. Well, if you're if you're hit repeatedly in the same spot, yeah. Yeah. You could get an infection, a really bad infection, yeah. Well, but she dies, like, immediately. <laughs> I don't think she gets, gets a staph infection. <laughs> I've never even asked what, how far your BDSM um, enthusiasm goes, because I, I don't want to know scared, this. Yep. I'm scared, yes. I'm frightened. <laughs> because I know that wow, how far it is, is 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 probably a lot further than what I imagined. No. And I'm and I'm going to be afraid. Okay. Of you. <laughs> and I and I can't I I can't do that no more. Let's just say I can hide a bottle of Galliano. I'm just trying. <laughs> no, oh, I'm, Jesus just, I'm joking. <laughs> well, thank God he connected the two names together. <laughs> mm. There's Ishtar and Ita. <laughs> There's so much fucking padding. For a 67 yeah. minute movie. Uh, yes, Dr. Flanders. So he couldn't really work out how to uh, get a field of focus. Uh, um, oh, because this policeman's a, bit, a little bit blurry. <laughs> Place called Ramsey's Catering. While you're there, they 
I think we got our killer. I think we got our killer. They're, they're sending all cars, but yet they don't even fucking... Where are they? <laughs> I mean, because he still gets the daughter into the kitchen and puts her on the counter and is about to fucking cut her head I mean, off. Sending all cars... That's all this an goes, really. Is it? Yes, it doesn't actually mean go there. Oh. <laughs> and another thing that he he didn't like about um, Connie Mason was that she um, wouldn't wouldn't stop giggling, mm -hmm. especially during that scene, because yeah. she she didn't she did not take it seriously. But yeah. then again, neither did Herschel or anybody else who worked on the movie, except for maybe um, Mal Arnold. Well, it's less about taking it serious, but being professional. Being professional, yeah. yes, that would you be, might know that, that what you're doing good. is garbage, but you at least. Give us best garbage. No, I don't you think can. I don't. I don't know if they knew that. <laughs> oh, there's the police. Oh no, they're just afforded the noise. Oh. oh no, you see them there. You are. Yeah, there's um, there's a handful of um of remakes. Of Herschel's movies, you, you got uh, 2001 Maniacs and The Wizard of Gore and Blood Feast, and I think that's it. I'm surprised there aren't surprised there aren't more. Yeah. Well, The Wizard of Gore was awful. Did they generally have good enough stories to you know remake? Uh, well, I think 2000 Maniac had an interesting story. What was that one? Um, it was about a small town in the south. Um, I think they were ghosts and they were descendants of the Civil War. And they're, they were tr trying to essentially right some wrongs. Okay. Or perceived wrongs. About the Civil War, and the theme song is "The South's Gonna Rise Again." <laughs> Yeehaw! So a little bit like the Fog. I haven't seen the Fog in <laughs> probably twenty-five years, and I wasn't that impressed with it then. Oh my god, listen to that sad, <laughs> sad music. I wouldn't even say it's sad, it's <laughs> melodrama. <laughs> it's very, yeah, it's very dramatic. <laughs> he sounded a little unsure of that line. Yes. The Feast of Ishtar. And they cook them. Oh no. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> It would have been good if you saw the guests eating. <laughs> well, let's get going. Roberts, Nicholson, Harris, get on that phone. Call the Fremont. Oh, God. Well, I mean, huh. He was, he's in the kitchen or whatever that was. It was the kitchen, right? When she was on the yes, counter. Yeah. He was in there with her for like a good 20 minutes. You mean to tell me that the guests didn't get a little peckish? <laughs> yeah, no, I have a few hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. Someone pass the testicles, please, thanks. <laughs> I just love these finger sandwiches. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God, this looks like the lamest. Is it like a coming out party? No. A Debbie Tomball. Yeah. <gasps> um... In uh, part two is pretty much the same story as this, only it's um, Peruvian. Floyd <laughs> Ramsey's, yes, it's Peruvian. It's Ramsey's um, grand, great grandson, I think. Yep. Our grandson. And he and a friend 
they reopen the fucking whatever that restaurant or whatever it is. Um, and a woman comes in to um, have a um, uh, have her her daughter's wedding <laughs> catered. I think it's the wedding in that yeah. one. Um, and John Waters plays the priest. Okay. Who hits on a 15 year old boy during the reception <laughs> and invites him to his house to go swimming. He was very proud of that Because <laughs> I heard him talk about it many, many times. Yeah. And, yeah, he was always like, yeah, I was in Blood Feast too. I played a pedophile priest. <laughs> well, I always, yeah, I always very, remember him very on, happy. Um, Are you there? I believe it was the Colbert Report, where he was talking about how he goes to schools to uh, read to children um, and, like, play with the kids. And he... Like, cause I think it was talking about how he did pink flamingos for kids, and um, I was just saying, well, people think I'm hanging around and, and I look like a pedophile, and, and I'm quite against pedophiles, <laughs> and like they were trying to say that, um, or what a, like what a liberal spec <laughs> step to be against pedophilia. Mm. Well, in his um, in his one man show. Um, this filthy world he did say one of his favorite things to do in public places is to say inappropriate things to children when their parents aren't in earshot not not sexual yeah, things yeah. um but just like weird things yeah. and there is no he said <laughs> he told the story he told the story about a little girl he saw like i think in an air oh no it wasn't an airport i don't remember what it was and he said she had, she had a little pocketbook and he said that's a nice pocketbook you have and she said thank you and he said is it new and she said yes and he said did you bring in here to steal things with <laughs> and she said no <laughs> and he said a lot of the time they go running to their parents and say this weird man said <laughs> such and such to me and he always says i didn't say that <laughs> making that up Oh, this dumb bitch. This is fun. Why is there a pillow in the kitchen? Hey. Um, so she can rest her big fat head. <laughs> of course not, my dear. Of course not. Lie down. I like toward <laughs> the end where he gets a little he gets a little agitated. Yes. <sighs> I've forgotten them. <laughs> See, I, I actually found their ditziness here quite uh, fun. <laughs> it's trying to be like <laughs> sacrificial, and then she's like, oh, she's what, no what? Parker Posey. <laughs> so, I forgot where my eyes are. Was that the one with the teeth? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fellow. <laughs> a twenty nine year old old man. A twenty nine year old old man, yes. So he is nine years younger than I am. <laughs> well he turned he turned he was twenty nine when this was filmed. He turned thirty. It was a very um, weathered twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, they there. He's. They, it's more than just the gray in the eyebrows and in the hair. They also darkened his features a bit. Yeah. To make to make him look, you know. Oh. <laughs> the way she came in with that line, she had her voice up. Yes. And you could tell it was in preparation of that screen. Yeah. It was like she couldn't go from zero to ten. She had to come in at ten. Yes. Because her range was limited, you know? It's like, oh, Mr. Rand. Oh, it's, oh, Mr. Rand. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It was almost like she came in knowing exactly what to expect. Yes. <laughs> a lot of tool. Oh, they had a lot of trouble filming the scene when he's running through the beach because there were people in both the Suez Motel and the, the it was called the Colonial um, that was right next door who wouldn't go the fuck in. Yeah. They, everybody was standing on the balconies watching. <laughs> I do think the scene when he's running and he's at that weird limp is kind of weird yeah, yeah. and creepy. One thing that always fucking bothers me about the final scene now after he gets eaten by the garbage truck is when the police or whoever and everybody comes to talk about it, there's one guy with a tank top who's standing dead center in the screen with his back to the camera. <laughs> I'll have to look out for it. You, you never have your back to the camera. No. That, that shows what poor direction. Yes. This movie has. It's the same thing with well, the um, mother here theater. has got her face away from the camera. Yes, you're not supposed to do that either. That's the same thing with theater. You're never supposed to have your back to the audience. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds more like an yeah. ambulance. Well, it's actually... Um, oh, those horns. Yes. Uh, when I used to live in the country, they used to do the emergency um, fire siren once a week. And it reminds me a bit of that. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I know that we've been making well, fun of the music, but I actually don't mind it. I'd rather it be bad subtle than bad over the top. Oh, you don't think this is over the top? No, oh, no not like with the drum beat. And, um, I've experienced worse I'm musicality. Sure I've created worse musicality. <laughs> It's less Jason with that machete and more Jason Derulo. Well, they were saying they were saying um, in the documentary um, that he was like, you know, this character was the the first with the machete. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, predated because everybody always likes to say they were first. Yeah, Halloween always likes to say they were first. Friday always likes to say they were first. <laughs> Chainsaw really never. You know, did much bragging. Oh, I like this very girlish screen here. I think it was added. Sounds in like post. you when you're getting plowed at the <laughs> BDSM party. <laughs> no, I'm very quiet. Oh, Ooh, he's very cute in his tank top. Not when you're taking two dicks at once. What? Oh, the tank top guy. Yeah, I know, but he has his back to the fucking audience, to the to the camera. It's not entirely back to the audience. Oh, now it is. Okay, fun. <laughs> it is a good side though. I thought the killer I thought I was gonna say no more. Like, it's out in the trash. <laughs> like, <laughs> this was like um, how uh, how Angela dispensed of um, yes, I was thinking Maria. that. I was re-listening to that commentary the other day. Oh my god! I don't know what that means. Yeah, you know no. what a bug oh, I am on Egyptian <laughs> culture. That's not that's not a saying. People don't say that. Fuad Ramesses, Colossus. So I called Doctor Flanders and asked him more about the blood festival of Ishtar. He said he knew of a Fuad Ramesses who had written a book called the Ancient. And now we have all this expository all dialogue. Here. A book we found next to the body of the girl who was killed in the bathtub. 
<gasps> oh, is that how they're all connected? <laughs> I Thank guess. God he said I would not have figured that out. Possessed anyone else? Lust? Murder? Food for an ancient goddess who received life through the perverted death of others. Ugh. Let's go home, Frank. No, you can't go home. You you have a lot of paperwork yeah, to do. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> And now the the garbage driver is going to drive off. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's got to make a statement. People have things mm, to do. Follow up, okay? The end. it's not time to go home. Jesus Christ, so unprofessional. <laughs> My secretary will cover that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm. that was enjoyable. And I loved how there was no closing credits that took 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Very exactly what you're talking <laughs> movies about. that shan't be mentioned. <laughs> mm hmm. Yes. So you enjoyed it? I did. Did you enjoy it more this uh, time around when you actually got to hear it in the audio it was, <laughs> or the speed it was intended? <laughs> Yes, that was good as well. But uh, I, I actually I can enjoy both cases. It's it, it's not spit up like chipmunks, so that's that's um, at least says that. Yes. No. Did you enjoy it? Um, I I it's be I think it's um better to watch with someone else in this kind of setting. Yeah, it's not so fun to watch alone see i i kind of feel bad because there are some movies that you want to enjoy because of their terribleness and i'm i was quite enjoying that movie so. <laughs> oh and you know what though i was going to tell the story but i forgot and i just remembered but there does there is a tie this does have a tie to um sleepaway camp for me mm -hmm. um when i was like um well until i was about 18 or 19 the original sleepaway camp was it was out of print and it was very 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 hard to find and um until anchor bay re-released it on vhs and dvd but um i there was an advertisement in the newspaper that there was this was like you know when i was about 13 or 14 there was a uh, video store that was going um, under yeah. and they were selling all of their stock of VHS tapes and I called them and said do you have sleepaway camp and they said yes we do and I said okay I'm coming over and by the time I got there I got there it was gone that's shitty and they could have set it aside for you they could have but they did not yeah and I, it was like, uh, I was completely shattered. And the only, the counter was right next to the horror section. And the only thing I kept focusing on was a copy of Blood Feast that was on the wall. Yeah. It had this like weird goofy, it was a big box that had this goofball cover. And I knew of it because of Serial Mom. And... I was thinking about getting it at my dad who had taken me was like, do you want it? Do you want something else? And I was, I considered blood feast again. And I was like, no, and then Take he went home. home and I was sad. Yes. I was very upset, but, um, any final thoughts on, uh, blood feast well i hope that your thanksgiving is not as cannibalistic yes that's that that will be that would be good yes. we don't well unless that's your thing you know we don't judge here at the blind rage podcast uh, the only cannibalism i do is fingernails mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and dingleberries <laughs> well i want to about. I know exactly what it is, and I stand by my statement. 
I want to thank you, Tony, for joining me. And thank you for having me. And I want to thank everybody for listening. And I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And until next time, this is Brandon Ford wishing you all unpleasant dreams.